Hey, welcome back to another CYT Crypto episode. My name is Stephen Aitchison and today we're going to be looking at the markets, what's happening in the markets, what's happening with Bitcoin price, looking at that and we'll also be looking at 13 KuCoin gems that could rise by 200% in the next 90 days. Now first of all, there was a problem with the sound yesterday and I'm looking to find out if the sound is okay so I'm just going to test this just now if you can bear with me a second. I just want to make sure the sound is okay. It sounds very low just now, so just bear with me one second. Right, um, it's still very low just now, the sound. So there's still something wrong with the sound when I'm going on. Okay, right, why is it doing this? One sec. I had it all sorted out before I came on, and then just when I went on live, I noticed the sound volume is very low. So bear with me a second, I'll try and get this sorted. I'm just going to pause that. Right. Right, I'm just going to change the channels. I've just changed the channel just now and it looks a bit better. Just now, one more second. Right, that sounds better. Okay, uh, I'll just go to the chat area. Okay, sorry about this. I was just fixing the sound. It was all sorted out before I came on live, but this uh, is the channel I'm on on the kind of mixer that I've got, but it seems to be working much better now. Uh, so thanks for bearing with me. Okay, so my name is Stephen H. We're going to go over the markets today, look at We'll probably not get a chance to look at a couple of news stories, but we'll, um, if we do get a chance to look at a couple of news stories, we will. Um, Bitcoin prices went up, which is good, but remember, it's only a short-term thing. We're looking at this Bitcoin price for the long term, and we're talking about the long, long term. Uh, we're talking about a couple of years, four years, five years, ten years even. We're going to be looking at that, or we want to look at that, or we want to think about that. So these kind of price rises just now, it's going to happen all the time. It's going to go up big time. It's going to come down big time as well. And we shouldn't really be too concerned about the price at all. It looks good for the portfolios, but remember, it's just a that's just a very it's a tiny micro and uh, cosm of what is going to be happening in the long term as well. So we'll be looking at that as well. Okay, I'll just dive over to the chat area. I don't think I've got the chat area set up, so I'll just get the chat area set up. And we'll dive over there and then we'll go into the markets. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, we'll just dive over. Who do we have in just now? We have Keg is in the house. Thank you very much for the donation. Really appreciate it, mate. We have Natasha Sakamoto is in. Welcome back. Good to see you, buddy. Um, we have Mike D, one of our brown admins, is in the house. Mervyn Skidmore is in. Um, Bruce Rudling has just joined us. Brundle25 has joined us. Marcus Jafari has joined us as well. So good to see everybody. Just making sure everything is okay. Uh, excellent connection. So we've got a good connection there as well. Okay, we'll dive into the markets. What's happening in the markets? We've got an overall market capitalization of $210 billion, which is up about $9 billion from yesterday, which is fantastic. Um, to see who's the winners and losers, we have Centrality is up 35%, Digit Dow is up 12%, only two in double digit greens. Obviously, when Bitcoin price goes up, they all tend to come down. We'll know there's going to be a major bull run when the Bitcoin price goes up and the alts um, go up as well. There's going to be an alt run soon. I feel still fit. I think there's going to be a, a big altcoin run um, very soon, and um, we're going to get altcoin season. Um, this year sometime, hopefully within the next couple of months. Um, XRP has gone up last as well, 8.49%. It's come back down a wee bit. Um, BitShares has gone up 8.85%. A lot of them, it looks as if it's going to go up. Or it looks as if it's gone up. But remember, this is in dollar value. If we change that to, in fact, we'll look at the dollar value and how, many, how much have we got on the up. We've probably got about 80% 
any in the green but if we go to satoshi value we'll just see if that stands true nope satoshi value it kind of reverses and we've got 20 percent in the green 80 percent in the red and satoshi value so it's not that people are buying the actual um, projects or coins themselves it's just because the dollar value has gone up in bitcoin so the dollar value has gone up with automatically with the and um, the old coins as well Okay, we're going to look at all the markets and just see what's gone up as well. And this is traded over 10K and this is the top um, 2,500. And we'll just see who's at the top just now. We'll just change it or see if it has changed. <clears throat> That's the lowest. Somebody's minus 73%. Wow. Okay, Dex. Dex was at the top yesterday. Um, it's up 383% over the last 24 hours. Over the last seven days, up 549%. It's on good volume as well, a quarter of a million um, volume, 275,000 volume. Webcoin is up 138% um, as well on 33,000 volume. Fortum Capital, haven't heard of Fortum Capital. Um, that is up 110%, but um, just looking at the volume, that's why I'm interested in that. And Curio is up 82% on 48,000. Okay, Fortum Capital, I'm just going to look at that just now. Just came on to coin market cap. 54 cents. It has been at $2.10 on December the 9th. I'm just going to look at the peers, the market peers, see what's coin tagger right there. So they're kind of renowned for wash trading. So uh, I wouldn't I don't think I trust that. Um, 59 cents. It's seven cents elsewhere in coins, but four cents and five cents so that's um i don't think is correct i don't know what's going on there but i don't think it's correct that's why it looks so good so i don't think that is correct information so that's the top 2000 um coins there's not that much to talk about because of the bitcoin price obviously as well okay crypto bubbles <clears throat> this will show you the stark contrast of what i've been talking about for ages i keep on talking about this and um, a lot of people are not quite understanding how this works, but this is the kind of dollar value of the actual altcoins just now. So you can see it's mostly in the green. Everybody's up apart from synthetics, made, FF, FSYS is not, etc. is down, or ETC is down, and Bitcoin, Quant is down. That's the big ones. They're kind of down in dollar value. But you can see that looks brilliant, a brilliant picture because we're looking at it in dollar value. But if we change this to Satoshi value, totally reverses and goes into the red. That means people are selling off in Satoshi value for Bitcoin. So once they trade these and they sell them off, they go into Bitcoin or dollar value. So the actual Satoshi value is actually going down for these. Dollar value is going up. Satoshi value is going down. We want the Satoshi value to go up um, as well. So that's um, that's a kind of stark contrast of what I've been talking about um, over the last few months about how the Bitcoin price really dictates the price of the altcoins as well. So mostly in the red in Satoshi value, mostly in the green in dollar value just now. Okay, over the last hour, what's it been doing? We're looking green over the last hour. How's it looking in Satoshi value? still quite good as well so that's a good kind of correlation there as well so that means they're starting to buy back the alts as well and this is what we're looking for when we get a big kind of run on bitcoin i think we're going to get a run on the altcoins at the same time which is very very rare but i think that is what's going to happen as well that means there's going to be more money coming into the market so it's not just people that are holding like you and i just now and um, because what we tend to do is sell off into bitcoin or to go into dollars um, or we buy altcoins with the bitcoin which means the Bitcoin price comes down. So um, I think we're going to get new money in and they're going to buy the alts and they're going to buy the Bitcoin as well. Just my opinion. Fear and greed index, around about the same, 40-ish. We're kind of middle of the road. Between 40 and 60 is middle of the road. It's not extreme fear. It's not extreme greed. It's nothing like that. We're just middle of the road just now. So that's a good um, stabilization sign as well. This is the sentiment value or sentiment indicator. Um, we've got for Bitcoin is really high just now, it's 72.04. Um, what else is high? We've got Litecoin going up at 66. Ethereum is up to 70. 
Binance Coin is up to 83.45 as well. XRP is up to 80. That's the highest I've seen that. And Monero is up to 61.7 um, as well. Tether, there's something happened with Tether on Coin Market Cap. Uh, a lot of people are kind of raging about it, saying there's more Tether printed, but it wasn't more Tether printed. It was just because the Tron network was actually added to Coin Market Cap. I don't know if we can see that just now. And um, just look at Tether. If I can show you this. Yeah, you can see here, supposedly the value of Kinetella went up to $4.6 billion, but that's not correct. It's just because the Tron network was added um, there as well. So a lot of people are up, up in arms about that, but it's just misinformation uh, on their part, to be honest. So it's just because um, the Terra network is uh, spread across different networks, EOS, Ethereum, Tron, etc. And it's just because Tron was added um, recently that that went up so quickly. Or the, yeah, you can see it there, more stark. So it was at 4.1 billion, it suddenly jumped up to 4.6, purely because the Tron network was added to that as well. So that was Tether, don't tend to pay attention to that, obviously it's stable. Um, but a lot of the coins are doing well in sentiment value as well, according to the Tide.io. Okay, what coins are doing well? We'll just kind of refresh this for sentiment value. This is across Twitter. What they do is they analyze the Twitter um, kind of information and the words used, if it's positive or negative or neutral. Um, centrality is high, 92.45. You can see the price has jumped 21.45%. Um, what else is high? OMG is high, but I'm just looking at the relative trading volume as well. Go chain that was high yesterday, obviously it jumped big time yesterday, still doing well today, up 22%, 79.25. Got Dragon Chain, that's within the list of 13 KuCoin gems that's there as well, but that's up 42% already. Um, so that is, it'll probably still be in the list, probably still keep it in the list, but it's already jumped. And I was doing that about six o'clock this morning, it started moving um, kind of big time. What else is doing well? 370, go chain, we've seen that already. XRP is doing well, um, high sentiment value and relative trading volumes 194%. It has come down um, to 2,744 Satoshi, but it did get up to 2,800 and above, 2,900 I think it reached. So XRP finally starting to move as well, and I think XRP for long term is really good. One coin that I really like for the long term is NEO. I still think that's going to do extremely well. Um, it's starting to move a wee bit just now. It's $9.69 at the minute, um, but it's starting to do well just now. And I think that's going to be big again, um, like it was back in 2017-18 as well. We'll just jump back to chat, see if anybody else has joined us. Uh, we've got Mitch Dieter is in house. Donny Don Matthew, good to have you back. David Schwartz is here. Um, Mike D uh, is in one of our brown admins. Is saying already. Iran price was fake news. Ah, the twenty four thousand, right? So I don't quite understand that how it could be twenty four thousand. I know it's used in local bitcoins as well. I didn't quite understand how that could be twenty four thousand when you could just go somewhere else and buy it. Um, Okay, thanks for clarifying, Mike. Donny Don Matthew, do you think possibility of conflict in the Middle East is a factor for the BTC run now? I read in a report the BTC is trading around 29,000. Ah, right, so you're responding to that. Right, so that was big news. So, yeah, I don't quite understand how how that would happen anyway. G Slick is in the house. Hi to you. Good morning to you. Um, totally stoked seeing the CYT gang. It's good to have you back, Donny Don. Okay. We will look at the Bitcoin price. What is the Bitcoin price? 7,879. It did reach 8,000. And I said yesterday this line here, and you can see it was struggling on a weekly to get past 7,545. And I said if it jumps above that, we're going to go up um, big time. And it did go above that, stayed above that, and it's jumped to $8,009. So $8,009 on a weekly. If we go on the daily, we have now come to a crossover, which is another big bullish sign. So there's a lot of bullish signs for Bitcoin just now. Obviously, it's staying above the support line. This is the, the long-term support line. I'm going to keep this up all the time. I'll forever have that because that's the line that's going to be really, really important. Um, as long as it stays above that line, I'm going to be bullish on Bitcoin. 
Um, the next kind of line there was to break through, and we can see that quite clearly. Here's the orange line, 7,545, uh, and I said if it broke through that, um, it could go much higher than that, which is really good. We've also got another bullish sign where the 7 EMA is crossing over the 50 EMA on the daily for Bitcoin, just crossing over today. So it needs to stay above, it needs to stay around about the 7,850. Um, when it changes over tomorrow, that will cross over tomorrow. Another big bullish sign. Um, for me as well and the fact that we're closing in on this downward channel um, if we can get to 8446 then we could be seeing another big big jump if it breaks this channel it's never broken this channel since June 2019 so we're talking about seven months we're still in this channel just now you can see I've got it kind of marked in, in purple there and we're still in that channel, but we're going towards the upper levels of the channel. Now, that could mean a couple of things here. If you're trading, it could mean this is when to sell. Once it hits this line here, round about 8,400, and I'm not saying it's going to do it today, 8,450. If it hits that, that would be a good time to short Bitcoin if you're a trader. And we'll have to think both ways. That would be a good time to short because it's um, at the upper edges um of the kind of resistance line on that downward channel so that'd be a good time to short so if we go back to here and um, back in the 10th of july good time to short was 13,000. then good time to short was 12,200. good time to short was 10,000, and a good time to short be 8,400. so we have to look at that i'm very bullish on bitcoin but we still have to look at that as well so but if it breaks out of here and we're talking about round about here if it breaks out of there, then that is another extremely bullish sign for the Bitcoin price going up even more than it is just now. So there's a couple of scenarios that could play here. But even if we did go to 8,400 and we broke down to here, we're still good. As long as we're in, uh, within this channel and as long as we stay above the support line, I'm not too worried about Bitcoin at all. And I think if we're looking at it long term, and we have to look at it long term, and that's a two weekly. We've gone in a monthly just now, and you can see this structure for the downward channel is still kind of intact even on the monthly. Um, so we're still within this channel here, but if we look at it on the monthly, and we kind of come down, this is what we should be um, paying attention to. So this is going all the way up. If we can put that in the bottom corner here and we'll take off the volume. So that's in the bottom corner. This is where we are just now in the bottom left hand corner. But if we look up here, 10 years time, we're talking about 2.2 million for the price of Bitcoin. Just 22 million actually. It's not 2.2 million, it's 22 million. 26, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. Yeah, it's 26 million. I'm not saying it's going to get to that, but that would be the lowest price in 10 years time according to this line if it stays true and stays true to the structure then that would be the lowest price now then we we'll have to look at the kind of highest price as well so the highest price would be 182,000 by the end of next year and the highest price in 10 years time say or eight years time we're talking about 33 million for bitcoin could it get to that who knows who knows? I'll just get this rid of this because I broke that. But way down here, when Bitcoin back in 2013, when it was $32, who would have said it would have got to $20,000? So who knows? It could get to $22 million in 10 years' time. It sounds fantastical just now to even think about that. It sounds way, way off to even think that it could do that. But we have to think long term. Now, at what stage would you sell out? For Bitcoin, if you held one Bitcoin, at what stage would you sell out? Would you sell out when it hit 100,000? So what's the lowest price? When's it going to hit 100,000 at the lowest price? 1st of May 2023, round about then, is going to be the lowest price. It's going to be around about $100,000. Would you sell out then? Or would you wait and have the foresight to say, okay, it's going to get even higher than this because it's going to, it's going to be more established in 2023 than it is just now? Would you wait and hold out till it got to a million dollars? And a million dollars, the lowest price 
we're talking in 2026, that'd be the lowest price in 2026, $1 million for Bitcoin. Would you have the foresight to hold out until that happens? So we have to think long term. This is not just a short term game. We have to think long, long term for this as well. I'm going to look at the Super Guppy. We've never done that for a while. Super Guppy, if you remember. All right, so we've looked at the Super Guppy a couple of times. We'll look at it, we'll revisit it again. So the Super Guppy turned green, first turned green in October, September 2012. And it lasted, and I'm just going to see how many days it actually lasted, not till we get to the highest price. But the Super Guppy turned green and it lasted for... Um, 742 days until it went to grey, then it went to red. When it turns green, it means it's a bullish sign for Bitcoin. It means all the parameters are kind of going up, uh, all the SMAs are going up, and the EMAs are going up as well, and it's very, very bullish. And so it lasted for 742 days, but uh, until it got to the highest peak was 427 days, and it went up 9,600%. So what I've done is very crude very crudely done is kind of extrapolated the information and looked at the next kind of green super guppy which was back on the 11th of January 2016. That lasted 700 days till it got to its peak and um, back at 20,000 or near 20,000. Um, so remember the last time it was 427 days, that was 700 days. It went up 4,300%. So kind of half of this, roughly half and roughly double the day, the, the kind of period it kind of got to its peak. And then it changed again on the 27th of May, 2019. Now I'm going to make this smaller and bring this down. So if you look at the information, we can say, okay, if it's going to roughly double, it went from 400 to 700 day period till it got to its peak um, until it, um, from when it turned green. So we can say 1100 days. Um, it's going to turn and then it's going to rise by probably another 2,000% because it's half and half again. So go from 9,000 to 192,000, round about 2022, 30th of May 2022 is going to get to that price if the information is correct and the it's just a rough kind of guide, the super guppy, and it's only done twice so you can't really kind of take it historically. Uh, has been really accurate, but the Super Guppy looks good at the moment. Still green, thought we were going to turn red, or thought we were going to turn grey, then go to red, but we're still green, and this big candle, uh, the weekly candle, is looking good to keep that in the green as well for the Super Guppy. So that's what the Super Guppy is about, and it's looking good to keep that intact at the moment. So 1100 day period, and we'll just go from here. Go to 1100 days is, yeah, 6th of June 2022. And we'll go to 192,000. That would be the highest price. And for me, that would be the time to sell and before buying back in again. Go back to chat area. Cap, G Slick is saying cap to look at. Never seen that. Natasha Sakamoto. Ram price was miscalculation, say Iranians. Crypto Dread is in the house. Good to see you back. Pension would be awesome at those upper prices. It'd be amazing at those prices. Still trying to sort that pension out as well. I need to get an FM a financial advisor to kind of sign that off. Without paying any money for it, I'm trying to figure that out a way. Because it's quite well. Tim Gash is in the house as well. Okay, let's go to the KuCoin prices. We're not going to look at any news just now. We'll go to KuCoin and look at 13... KuCoin gems that could go up. Okay, uh, some of them have went up already. We're going to look at them individually and very quickly go through them, just like we did yesterday as well. The first one is Ampleforth. Ampleforth just now is it's not a stable coin as such. It's not a stable coin as such. It's an elastic kind of coin, if you will. And it's kind of a bit difficult to explain. But I like the look of Ampleforth. You need to check it out to kind of understand the elasticity of it um, as well. Um, but it's not a, a stable coin in the true sense of the word stable coin. And um, the price can go up and down. You can you can see here the price has been up to two dollars and thirteen. 
Um, it's been up to 1 dollar 13. It's kind of stabilizing just now, around about 1 dollar 5, and it has been all the way down to 33 cents um, as well. Um, but it can go up and down. Um, but the simplicity of this and the difficulty of this is, is what really intrigues me as well. And I'll just go to the website just now. Smart commodity money. And um, what Ampo is, the Ampo is a commodity money like Bitcoin and gold, but with near perfect supply elasticity, like fiat, is the first sound money with elastic supply. Um, so it's talking about fiat, why it was created and everything else. I really like the look of Ampo Forth. So that's the first one. Check into these yourself. Uh, I'll give links to them in the kind of description down below as well. Um, but Ampo Forth is the first, first one I'm going to um, kind of look at and say this could go up by at least 200% over the next 90 days. 1.7 million market cap at the moment. The next one is Traveller.com. I've seen this, I've showed you this before. I've written a report on this as well and showed you why this could um, kind of go up. But this, I feel, could go up by 200% or more in the next 90 days um, or so as well. Um, I say the next 90 days, I'm probably talking about um, over the next few months and that could be anything from now up to a couple of, uh, up to six months to even 12 months. But I'm, I'm just going to say 90 days. But Traveller is doing really well at the moment. This is, it's just a travel, it's not just a travel website, it's a travel website on the blockchain and you get um, cryptocurrency back when you book um, with them as well. So it's unique in that sense because they're kind of first, one of the first to market. Sharing are doing something Similar, but to me, SharingRing are doing something much better as well. I've not got SharingRing on here because they're not on KuCoin. I'll be doing that in another video as well with SharingRing. But still like, I still like the look of Traveller.com as well and like their operation, how it's set up. And they're kind of well into that market just now as well on the blockchain. Traveller has got a market cap of 3.6 million um, just now. And their price is 9 cents at the minute. And they have been all the way up to... Been up to 6.6 .6 million already, and um, so that's about 100% from where it is just now. So, I still think these are going to do really well, and they've only got 61 million supply of these as well. So, I think Traveler is going to do really well. And Veracity is another one I really like as well. Two and a half million market capitalization for them. This is the one on KuCoin as well. These are all on KuCoin, and it's an attention based platform for video rewards. So like Veracity just now is built on existing video and ads and distribution platform including YouTube, Twitch, Vimeo, JW Player, etc. So Veracity looks good, VRA. Uh, it's got, um, the, I was first alerted to this with the Blockfire report. Um, so again, if you check this out and look at the Blockfire report as well, I think the score for them. Right, general opinion. Overall, we like the idea behind Veracity and it definitely solves an existing problem of the current ad market. While there are several competitors and unclear conditions overall, the potential of Veracity and its unique approach to programmatic ads is vast. While it's far too early to make an accurate prediction of how this project will do, Veracity is a promising project in a market space that is primed for disruption. So it's looking at the ad spaces on kind of video networks. Um, and I really like this as well. And it was um, Blockfire that first got me can look at them and I've looked at them and they look really, really good. And the market cap is still 2.53 million, so it's still really good as well. Utrust. <clears throat> still like the look of Utrust. I've spoken about this a couple of times. It's gone down in price. We just look over the last three months. It's gone down in price over the last three months. Um, looked at um, back in October, 10 million it was. It's down to 4.4 million. Obviously, the whole market is coming down just now. Bitcoin price has gone up, so it's going to come down even more. Um, volume is good on this. A lot of people are interested in this as well. Um, you trust. Accept crypto payments easily. This is for um, if you've got a business, you can accept crypto payments like the business I've got as well. Uh, you can accept crypto payments as well. So I like the look of you trust as well. I think this could be really big. Disrupting the likes of um, PayPal, etc. as well. I've got a couple of these um, on this list as well. So you trust is another one, 4.49 million. And the next one we've got is Axpire. I've looked at this a couple of times in the past as well. Um, and I thought as an outsider, it could do really well. And it has been up to about 1.8 million. So 200% from where it is just now. And um, so it could easily jump up once people get, um, kind of look at this and start to 
um, check it out. The best part of it that I like is the PBX uh, cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency payments application. Uh, it's a cryptocurrency payments application that allows you to spend your crypto without the hassle of converting your funds to traditional fiat money, costing you fees and time. Obviously, there's other players in the market with them, Axbuyer, but Axbuyer, uh, kind of, they've got a very low market capitalization, and if they get even part of the market, I think they could do extremely well, um, as well. And I like the fact that they're bringing out a card as well. So I like all of that. Any kind of company, and um, the likes of Crypto.com, I like that kind of model, the business model for that. And I think there could be a lot more than one in the space, just like there is just now. Um, and I like Axpire. It could be an outsider as well that could do real well. Um, M what restart energy. Uh, 3.6 million. It has been a lot higher than this before. It has been up to 29 million and it's going down just now. Um, it was up to 13 million a couple of months ago. And that's an energy supplied as well on the blockchain. Uh, we'll just look at be part of Red. Download the app now. <coughs> um, where is it? Let's just have a look. Well, it's, there's a couple of players on the market in here as well. And with the MR to MR token as well. But this space is really going to grow, I think, in the next couple of years. This is um, kind of energy on the blockchain and kind of trading energy on the blockchain as well. And I really like it from that kind of point of view. But it is at the moment 3.6 million market capitalization. And as I said, it's been up to 29 million before. So it could easily kind of rise 200% um, over the next few months um, as well. Um, designed and backed by the European Union's fastest growing private energy provider, the Red Platform will have 27,000 households and more than 3,000 SMEs and multinational corporations ready for use on day one. So I think this could be uh, one to watch, one to watch. It's not a certainty, but it's definitely one to watch. The next one for KuCoin is TE Food. Now, this has been out for a while. TE Food was spoken about it multiple times over the last few years, actually. Um, before it came on, came on to coin market cap as well. It has been up to 23 million, it's 3 million just now. So really about eight times from where it is at the moment. But this is a supply food chain, um, farm to table food traceability on the blockchain. And I think there's a couple of players in the market on this as well, like Track and a few others as well. But this looks really good. It's been around for a couple of years as well. They're getting more and more experience. And they've got a lot of um, kind of business customers as well, 6,000 plus business customers. And I think they're only going to get bigger. So this could be a really good one as well. 3.3 million market capitalization. Uh, the volume is decent on this, 26,000. Um, it's not that bad at all. Um, but I think this could do well over the next few months as well. Next one we have is Loki. Now, this is one of the ones that's higher market capitalization and it's kind of going up um, as well. I think this has been picked by um, Tika Tawari as well. Um, and Loki, um, I think it's been mentioned a few times, but it's a trade and communication with absolute freedom. So it's a privacy um, kind of token as well. And there's a couple of things they're looking at doing here. They've got Loki Wallet, Loki Messenger Beta, and Loki Net is in beta as well. So Loki actually looks quite good and it could still do well from here, even though it's a 17 million market capitalization. The volume is good on it. The trade volume is good on it as well. So I think Loki could be one to watch as well. 17 million is... It's higher than the other ones we've looked at, but you're talking it's still extremely low if you're looking at the top 100 um, as well. It is ranked at 152. So even if it 10x and got to 170 million, that would put it in the top 30. Uh, I still think it could do something like that. Um, but 200% uh, um, to go up to about 51 million could be good as well. Spain coin. I still like the look of this. I had a, a bit of a wobble. Um, I kind of mentioned this a couple of months ago. And I like the, again, it's the fact that you can, um, you've got a card with this and you can spend your crypto using the card. Uh, it's 1.2 million market cap. Um, after I kind of first mentioned it a few months ago, I can't remember where it was um, with regards to market cap. I think it was, was about 500,000 or something, 600,000. It went up and then it subsequently kind of came down. And I thought there was a lot of um, kind of information out in the marketplace that was kind of putting this down. But having looked at it, um, I still think this could be a good one, Spendcoin, um, 1.2 million. Even if that goes up 200%, you're talking about 3.6 million um, for that. <clears throat> 16 Satoshi at the moment. And Spendcoin, just look at the website. Real-time decentralized payment. Spend chain enables a cross-chain 
interoperable payments blockchain system that's designed for merchant processing. They're seamless, instant and free. So I like the fact that they've got this for merchants as well. Obviously, I'm a merchant, so I would kind of use that as well. But as I said, they've got a lot of competition, but I think there's room for that competition in the marketplace. They've got a card as well, spend.com, and they've got a card out as well that you can use. I'm just waiting for spend.com. Got it. So learn how to earn up to 6% back with spend.com. So it's like a kind of visa card for that. So I think that's a good, uh, I just like that business model, just like, um, but the, there's only going to be really enough room for a few, but we've got a few and we've mentioned a few as well that could be really good. And um, the next one is VIDT. And this is in the um, kind of digital, um, for validating digital files. I think this could be good. We've looked at this a couple of months ago as well. It's only got a market cap of 2.49 million, but there's lots of areas that this could go into. Uh, again, this could um, kind of not rival, but be in competition with them, kind of food traceability um, as well. So there's lots of different areas, um, which is what I like. I'm just going to look at, yeah, use cases, education, finance, law, um, as verifying um, kind of digital files as well. I think this could be a good one. And we've looked at this before. As I said, it was higher. And before, yeah, it was up about 3.2 million, 4 million when we looked at it. And it has been as high as 14 million. So around about 600% from where it is just now. So that could be another good one as well, only 2.4 million. Next one is Ocean Protocol. That's one of the big data ones I really like. This has done really well over the last few months um, as well. It has been as low as 4 million. Obviously lower than that in the past. Um, where has it been? 7 million. Yeah, about 4 million, 3, 4 million. But it's gone up um, since then as well. And it's already went up 200%. But I still think this has got a lot, a lot of room to grow um, as well. So an ecosystem for the data economy and associated services with a tokenized service layer that securely exposes data storage and algorithms for consumption. So this is for data providers and data consumers as well. So you can sell your information um, as well to certain companies. And but by selling your information, you're kind of doing that just now to a degree as well. When you sign up for something, your information is kind of being stored on a database somewhere and they then sell that information. You actually get paid for doing it exactly the same as you're doing just now when you sign up for an insurance company or something. You have to give your name, your address, details, all, the, all that kind of stuff that's supposedly not being sold, but it really is being sold um, to other companies um, as well. So your information, you can sell that information and data providers can use that information to market to you as well. So like Ocean Protocol, I think it's... Um, got a, a real chance this is one of the really good ones that could do extremely well and really kind of 10x over the next couple of years the next one is constellation it's gone down in price so this is an actual good time to look at this and um, which is dag it's another data and um, big data democratized constellation is the world's only blockchain technology designed for big data providing infrastructure for an open decentralized data marketplace and an enterprise grade software solution for data provenance and integrity. So if you think of Chainlink, this is kind of like Chainlink as well. Um, and this could really grow. This is probably the one of the strongest ones I think could really grow big time in the future as well. And I'm I'm talking I'm not only talking 10x, I'm talking 10, 20, 30, 40 X uh, in the future and um, the next couple of years as well. Um, but we'll wait and see. It's come down as it was at around about 20 million for the market capitalization. It has been a lot higher than that. Just 20 million it has been. So it could rise by 100% and still be within its kind of parameters of where it's been recently um, as well. And it's got that recency effect as well. So it could rise quite quickly when it starts to go again. I think it's 133 Satoshi just now. I don't know if that's the same at the moment. I've done this this morning. 129 Satoshi. So it's down even further. Because of the Bitcoin price going up, this is coming down as well. So they're also coming down. So really like the look of that as well. Constellation, probably one of the strongest ones, I would say, um, to rise big time. Coty is another one that looks good in the DeFi space. Um, 1.9 million market capitalization just now. The ultimate power grid of payments. 
Um, so in an era of everything, digital currencies remain outdated. Currently, it's cheaper to pay in cash than to use banks, PayPal or Alipay and the like. Koti is the first enterprise-grade fintech platform that empowers organisations to build their own payment solution and digitise any currency to save time, time and money. A wee bit different from the competitors, but still kind of doing roughly the same. Um, but I, I really like the look of Koti as well. And as I said, there can be a lot of players in this kind of market for a payment solution. Next one is Dragon Chain. Unfortunately, Dragon Chain has gone up. Um, it was up 26% when I was looking at it. I don't know where it is just now. I'll just refresh that. Yeah, it's gone up 30%. <coughs> so it's up to 494 Satoshi at the minute. I still think this could go a lot higher. Dragon Chain, I've looked at it uh, in the past. I um, think it could do really well. It has been as high as $1.2 billion just now. So a big, huge fall from where it was. That was kind of really talked about back in January 2018. And that was at the height of the market um, when it really came out. It came out in 2017, but it was a kind of quickly shot up. Um, this could do really well again. I'm not saying it's going to get up to $1.2 billion, um, but it could do extremely well. We're talking about... Two, 200%, 3, 4, 5, 6, 700% in the next year or so as well. So I like the look of Dragon Chain. Blockchain is a service for enterprises and developers and business flexibility through blockchain. So that could do really well as well. And the last one of the 13 is Insular. Insular is also trading on um, Binance. So you could get it on Binance as well. I looked at the Binance coins. It could um, kind of go up by 100%. Uh, I don't think I included in Sarah in that, so I'm going to get include it on this and say this could go up by 200% over the next um, 90 days. And this is another one that's kind of been that's been really high before. It's been up to 193 million market capitalization, which is about what, 25x from where it is just now, 2,500%. Um, so this could do really well as well. And in Sarah, blockchain solutions for businesses. I've got a couple of um, SaaS out there as well. So global technology company building innovative public and private blockchain solutions on Insular blockchain platform, the most secure, flexible and scalable blockchain for business. And I do like the look of these and what they can do. Supply chain and logistics, energy and utilities and going to retail and consumer goods, automotive um, as well. So it could be really good for Insular as well over the next year or so. But I think it could still rise by 90, um, 200% over the next 90 days or so. Strongest one for me for long term would definitely be DAG Constellation. Um, I think that's going to be a really good one. Same with the Ocean um, as well. That could be one of the, a really strong one as well. So there's a lot, I keep talking about KuCoin. Um, there's a lot on KuCoin, although the liquidity is not there. You can buy absolute stunning um, kind of projects on here. They're going to be big for the future, so that means they'll go on to other exchanges as well. So I don't know what your favourite one is, um, and there's there's going to be loads that I've missed out on KuCoin, but those are the 13 um, that I'm kind of talking about on KuCoin just now. And we'll just see what's doing well on KuCoin at the minute. We've got Fota, Fortuna is up, <clears throat> and the volume on that is up 33%, but you can see the volume is 0.21 of a Bitcoin. Just now, so the volume is not really there, the liquidity is not there. Although I like KuCoin, um, I just think I wished the, there was more liquidity in the kind of play in the marketplace on KuCoin, but I really do like KuCoin. Even the KuCoin shares itself could be really good. And if we look at KCS, $89 million, $1.9 at the minute. And I think it could be a lot higher than that. Just need the liquidity um, for KuCoin. Uh, it's such a shame because I've got some brilliant projects on there, and they tend to choose quite good projects. There's been some duffers out there, um, but they tend to choose good projects to put on the system as well. Uh, I'm just hoping the sound is okay now. I've been talking for about 20 minutes. I didn't realise. I'm just hoping the sound is okay. Just hoping the sound. Yeah, it is. Okay, we'll go back to the chat area. <clears throat> Ben O'Donnell is in the house. Welcome to you. Happy New Year to you as well. Haven't seen you for a while, mate. Um, Crypto Fresh has um, joined us as well. Good to see you here. I don't think I've seen you here before, so good to have you here. Crypto Knowledge Alliance are very on Jimbo is in the house. Welcome to you, mate. Uh, if you want to check out Jimbo, Jimbo has got his channel on Altcoin Buzz, or he's one of the 
um, kind of people and all coin buzz as well. So really good videos from Jimbo looking at kind of the charts as well. So if you want to check out on all coin buzz, you can do as well. Um, whole 2020 is going to be a brilliant year for you, mate. Donny Don Matthews still surprised what happened to Pandy X and Dent. Both of them have been making a lot of ongoing projects and activity as per their respective social media. Just not do not have a clue. I was talking about it yesterday, um, Donny, about this, about how it goes into that basket of just having a clue. So I think Hot is getting there as well, is in danger of going into that basket as well. Saying that yesterday, I put it into the basket of it's going to rise by 100%. Um, very soon over the next couple of months um, but it's in danger of going into that basket of I haven't a clue why the price is so low. Pundi X have kind of an idea of why it's so low because they've got so many kind of tokens out there and, and they've changed the model a couple of times that's the only reason I can think of but to me I wouldn't trade it again uh, unless there's clear signs of where they're going. Dent, having a clue I just think that's a good business model they've got they've got partnerships, I uh, don't know what's going on with it to be honest. Kundalini2222 um, two, 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 two is in the house. Welcome to you. Are you still in touch with the bad team, mate? Nope. Um, to me, uh, I'm not trading or looking at BAB at all. I don't trust them. I don't trust the um, kind of CEO, Rush Day. Um, but that's for me. It's done extremely well. In fact, we'll look at um, backs as well. It's done extremely well over the last couple of months. Where is it just now? I think it's up 3.3 Satoshi. 3.5, so it's going up again. So it was, we're talking, it was below one Satoshi for a long, long time. Uh, it kind of went up to about six Satoshi at its peak, come back down and it's kind of hitting that um, 3.54 Satoshi at the minute. And I say 3.54 because KuCoin is um, 10 decimal places, not eight decimal places. So it's doing well, it's doing okay just now. They're bringing out the app, it's imminent um, launch for the app. To me, big deal, they've got an app coming out. If they get a banking license, that, that is a huge deal. And that's what we were, we're all waiting for over the last year or so. Um, and they kind of intimated that that was going to come out, kept on saying it was going to come out, kept on saying it was going to come out, um, but never materialised. If they came out with that, that would be a big thing. If they're coming out with the app, what app to do is who cares? There's an app. Um, and I don't know why they've taken so long to come out with the app unless they're going to get the banking licence um, together with the app coming out. If that happens, then that is a big, big deal um, for BAB. Still wouldn't trade it. Um, lost trust in them altogether. But new people coming in, um, then that is a good thing. Or the people that kind of held the coins as well, it's gone up in price, so that's a good thing as well. So happy that the, the, they're going to go up if they bring out the kind of license and the app at the same time. If they just bring out an app, <laughs> it's not a big deal at all. So we'll see, we'll see what happens with that, but the, the, the app is imminent, but apparently a couple of weeks ago, it was imminent as well. So, because the, they kept on saying, okay, there's three days to go, two days to go, one day to go, and then nothing. I don't trust them, um, but that's my opinion. And I, I kind of hid that for so long, because um, I didn't want to kind of talk down about them, but yeah, it's Rust D I don't trust, that's the person I don't trust, it's not necessarily um, the kind of employees or the company itself. Uh, it's a big difference there. Uh, Natasha Sakamoto BST plus 1500%. Blog stamp, yeah. Blog stamp's doing real well. It's where it jumped into the top 100 as well. Honestly, don't know anything about it. Blog stamp, but we're talking it was market cap 2.6 million. It's now went up to 41 million. Um, so that's, like you say, 1,500%. I'll just have a look at it just now. Blockchain ecosystem supporting privacy, fairness, authentication, and freedom. So I don't know why it's jumped up, though. The number of BST, BST generated per block equals one BST and constant all the time. Decrease block time. Increase transaction size. Yeah, so I don't know why it's kind of gone up so much. So I'd need to look into that. Um, possibly you know why as well. And Gary Parmenta, the new PRC government, backed by the Super Blockchain Network as an interesting development. It will be interesting to see how NEO, ONT, TKY and so forth morph into this project. We're going to have to look at that as well, yeah. Um, Shahir, hey Steve, what's your opinion on 
kick token. Don't have one, I don't know about it. I think that's on KuCoin as well, isn't it? Kick. 22 million market cap, 18,000 volume. It's kind of going up just now. It was down at 1.5 million. It's up to 22 million. So I don't know why it's gone up. So I'm just going to see if it is the one on KuCoin I'm talking about. Yeah, it is the one on KuCoin. So we'll just have a look at that as well. Kick token. To me, if we're, no, it doesn't make sense. I'm not going to say that. Um, kick ICO, create campaign, successful campaigns, active campaigns. Okay, is this like a Kickstarter? Ah, so it's like Kickstarter, hence the reason kick ICO. Ah, okay. That would have been a good one to look at actually, before it went up. Create campaign. Excellent, that could be a good one. Uh, I like Kick, uh, or I like Kickstarter and their kind of business model as well. So this could be a good business model, but it's gone up um, big time already. And so we're talking, what's it gone up? So it was at 1.33 million. And we're talking, that was on November the 25th. So you're only talking a couple of months. It was at 1.3 million. So it's gone up a big time already. So the token has gone up about 15, nearly 2,000% already. It's done really well. It has been much higher than that though. It has been up to 86 million. So 300% from where it is just now. So yeah, that could still be a good one. Um, Kundalini, classic pump and dumps and wash trading. Now I don't think it doesn't look like it with um, Kick. Um, have a look at uh, Enigma, Stevo, privacy on Ethereum partnership, Thintail and a lot more. Yeah, we've looked at that before, Enigma. I don't know where they are just now, what they're doing just now, but that's obviously on Binance. As well, 13 million market capitalization it has been a lot higher than that. Yeah, half a billion for Enigma. Uh, and still, Enigma could do really well as well. And I have looked at that before. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. I know that was kind of longer. I was going to um, have a quick look at was there any kind of news headlines I was looking at? And um, there was Bitlord. And um, he was saying this is the start of the greatest build on of the decade. Crypto is about to mint a whole new generation of millionaires. Better strap the hell in. Um, you're saying as well as kind of looking at that. I've got a message there. I need to check that after. Bitcoin's price discovery is kind of natural. Anthony Pompliano. Um, that was just a kind of headline there. I was looking at. Could XRP be on the cusp of 140% rally? Analysts think so as well. And there's some uh, something else about um, XRP. Peter Schiff mocks Bitcoin's 4% price rally. How will it ever hit 50k? That's just because he's into something else. Peter Schiff, for those Bitcoin bugs, excited about Bitcoin's 4% rally in 2020. Think about this. Gold is also up by the same percentage this year, only with significantly less downside risk. If this is the best rally Bitcoin can muster, how will it ever hit for 50k, let alone 1 million? Peter Schiff is kind of down. Um, he's always down on Bitcoin because he's got a gold company. So he's trying to promote his company, which sells gold, basically. And um, that's what he's doing. Or you can buy gold from him or some form of it, a derivative of it. Um, so that's why I sold down on that and so up on kind of gold. So I don't know why we still pay attention to Peter Schiff. In fact, I shouldn't have even kind of put him in here, to be honest. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. I think there was other kind of another XRP that was delisted from an exchange. Uh, I was looking at that, but I think we'll leave it there. Just now, Kukla, he just made it. <laughs> Is Chico Crypto fighting Hoskinson yet? No, I think that was called off. <laughs> Um, Donny Don Matthew Celsius has made some big moves in terms of price appreciation in the past couple of months and joining weekly interest to pay out on the wrap. Yeah, Celsius looks good actually. That's a, I looked at that last month. Celsius, I looked at it ages ago to be honest. Um, but then I looked at it again last month and it does look good. But the price has jumped up in a big time, 3.9 cents um, to 14 cents. So it's went up about two, three hundred percent already. But Celsius does look good. Um, yeah, but we checked out a, a while ago at long. A long while ago. Yeah, Kukla, yeah, just for you, 13 KuCoin. 
um, projects. It could do really well. <laughs> it wasn't just for years. Look, what I was going to do is I was going to do 13 hidden gems. But then when I seen your post quickly this morning, earlier this morning, I thought that would be a good one to do a video on. So thank you for the inspiration for that. Um, Al Grand does look good, Kundalini. Um, have a great day, Steve. Thanks for your time. Been a while since heard you. Namaste. So namaste, Steve. You as well, Donny Don. It's good to have you back, mate. Good to see you kind of live on this as well. So we'll leave it there for just now. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate your time. Um, last one out. Mind hit the like button as well. And until next time, namaste. Take care. Bye now.